welcome to pre-cal video 1.c where we're discussing uh, just a little bit more on box plots we're going to go over standard deviation and how it can affect changing units and how to organize a statistics problem so all right the five number summary um this we we do know it is our min our q1 our median our q3 and our maximum and we need those numbers in order to make a box plot and typically in order to understand data as we move to the future we'll add on two when we see a couple slides later with mean and standard deviation um how to make a box plot here's some information you probably already feel comfortable with this but just to kind of re-go back over that um barry bond sets the major league record hit by by hitting 73 home runs in a single season in 2001. On August 7, 2007, Bonds hit a 756 career home run, which broke Hank Aaron's longstanding record of 755. By the end of the 2007 season, when Bonds retired, he had increased the total number to just 762. Here are data on the number of home runs that Bonds hits in each of his 21 complete seasons. So we've got this data. It's not in any sort of order. It's uh, anything like that. But we're going to go ahead and ma make it into a box plot. So some basic steps. We're going to want that five number summary. What are our outliers? And let's draw it. So that five number summary, remember, I want it in ascending order first. I want the median. And, you know, the median is going to change depending on whether the total number of, um, what was it? home run hits is even or odd the court the quartile one the quartile three the minimum and maximum value for now i mean we'll adjust if we know outliers and then we can get our five number summary i've already done this so here it is in ascending order that's where i started i caught my median i calculated from there where my quarter one was and because of the because of where it was I ended up having to average quarter one between and then my min and max were 16 to 73 so that's the full official range for now but let's go ahead and check that part two the outliers so in order to get outliers I'm going to need that IQR and I'm going to need the IQR times 1.5 and then I'm going to need to subtract that from Q1 and add that to Q3 to kind of figure out where are those actual outliers what is the minimum and maximum that my data is um, in that central tendency in that in that IQR range sorry in our non outlier range okay so IQR was 45 minus 25.5 and again where did I get those values from that's my Q1 and my Q3 so here is my Q3 and my Q1 recall that IQR is equal to Q3 minus Q1 so I got 19.5 as my IQR, and then we're going to multiply that by 1.5 to get that outlier true value difference. But I'm just going to go ahead and plug it into my formula. Since I know my Q3 and my Q1, I know that one of my boundaries says 74.25, and my other boundary is negative 33.75. So do I have values above 74.25? Do I have values below negative 3.75? I know immediately I can get rid of this because I have no negative values. He didn't hit negative home runs. But we can check our data for above 74.25. As you saw, our max was 73, so there is no outlier. So that is our max and that is our min. There are no outliers in this set, okay? Final thing we do is draw a box plot. This is drawn by hand as you progress. We're gonna see how to use the TI Inspire to draw it and I've got some links in and we will practice that in class next week. But here it is drawn by hand. I have my min, my max, my box itself. The my whiskers represent my min and my max, but my box itself is gonna be that quarter one, quarter three, and that in split is the median. As you can see, we've got some interesting skewing going on. All right, this is a check your understanding. I hope that you really do, do do this example and show me on Monday or Tuesday. Um, because I posted this video late, because the video broke the first time, I'm not even sure what happened, but because I'm posting this video late, I will let you know that there is an extension on the notes. So you can turn them in Monday, but officially it's not due until Tuesday. So I'm letting you know. I am letting you know. All right, so the 2011 roster of the Dallas Cowboys professional football team included eight offensive linemen. Their weights in pounds were this information. So the five, four questions I'd like you to answer. What's your five number summary? Calculate your IQR and interpret. Determine your outliers and draw a box plot. Very basic information. Okay. All right, let's move to standard deviation. I know y'all had a lot of questions about this. Thanks for being patient and waiting for this video. This is the definition of standard deviation. And I'm going to just kind of walk you through it step by step with an example. Really briefly, the steps for standard deviation 
kind of general idea of the standard deviation. Again, I'm going to walk you through it, not necessarily differently, but my own language. So I've got this image of, of data that displays the number of pets owned by a group of nine children in a dot plot, which with the mean clearly marked. Oh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, my bad. So here is the data that I should have had pulled up. The data value one, this is what they're talking about. The data value one is four units below the mean. My mean was at five. It's clearly marked. My balance point is marked. My, so if how far away is one from five? That's all a deviation is. How far away is it? Well, it's four away, but it's four away to the left, so it's negative four away. It's in the negative direction, okay? What about the value seven? Obviously, this image shows you everything, but the value seven is two away from five, right? The value seven is two away from five, so it's a positive deviation of two, two units above the mean. Okay, so, you know, if we were showing this, they're showing you that this arrow is showing your deviation away from the mean and how much the data varies from that. They're starting points for calculating the variance and standard deviation. That's all we're talking about with this is deviation is how far away from that mean. But standard deviation is a calculated version of, you know, like, what is the, what is the normal variance away? What is the normal expectation for your data to be away from your mean value? So looking at all of your data, what's the average distance away from that mean? I guess it's the simplest way I can kind of put that. So let's look at this. We're going to, again, we're taking a kind of building blocks on the standard deviation. So I've got this table set that I got from that data. So I know observation one. So again, from this original data, but I took the deviations, the initial minus the average. So initial value is one minus five is negative four. We already knew that one because we did this together on the dot plot. We did seven on the dot plot. So all we did is take the differences always away from that mean. This is a repeating value. It will always be that same value. Okay. If we add them all up together, we take the sum then we should get zero because the mean is the balance point of this distribution. So that means if I add up all of the negative deviations and all of the positive deviations, well, hey, shouldn't that be zero or about zero? Absolutely. But because that's zero or about zero, we need another way to calculate the spread around the mean. So instead of simply taking the um, initial value and subtracting the mean and getting that negative four or getting that two, instead of understanding bit by bit what happens Ah, how can we cancel it out, right? Okay, so what happens when we square them? What happens when we square them? So new data set, same information here and here, but this is new. We've squared each value, negative four squared, negative four squared. What happens? The negatives disappear, right? That's what happens when we square them. So we've, we've eliminated that balance point, and now we're just looking at some, some information. So we're going to take that, and we're going to add them all up. And briefly, some kids asked me about what that, this squiggle, this is actually a sigma notation, and this means to sum your sequence. So this is my sequence term one, sequence term two, sequence term three, four, five, six, eight. And so if I add them all up, then I summed all of this. That's this part of the formula that you wrote down. That's what we just did. We took 16 plus four plus, and I think I have it. Um, no, I didn't. Okay, so we took 16 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 and all the way down and we got to 52. We can compute the average square deviation now with this information, but let's take it a little further. Instead of simply dividing by 9, the total value, we're going to divide by n minus 1. So we're going to remove one of the observations. So this becomes the average squared deviation and we put it in quotes because it's not a true average because it's not divided by nine it's divided by nine minus one so we end up with 52 divided by eight which is 6.5 this is what we call the variance that's a vocabulary word there's a way to calculate uh variance as that s subscript x uh, super super sup, yeah subscript to superscript x but how do we use this to actually calculate standard deviation we Currently, what they mean by squared pets, if we thought about this, remember the actual example, we looked at nine children and how many pets they had in their house. So when we squared one minus five, we had negative four pets. We squared it, now we have 16 pets squared. But that's not what we want. We don't wanna know about pets squared, so we need to square root the square. So 
to get standard deviation, ta-da, you square root the variance. It's that simple. And I end up with 2.55 pets. So let's see that in a nice, neat summary. So it is the typical distance of the value in the data set from the mean. It doesn't mean each point is 2.55 away from that average of 5. It means that that is the average distance on either side. Okay, so the number of pets typically varies from the mean by about 2.55 pets. Great sentence. Descriptive, specific, use as appropriate vocabulary. So that's all standard deviation is. You take that funky, crazy looking uh, equation and you break it down. You start with your mean, that's the, you start with your mean, you create your, your subtraction sets in each point, okay? You square it, now you've got variance. You sum it all up, that's what that sigma notation means. You divide by n minus 1 because you're actually getting uh, the, the standard, or sorry, the, the deviation variation, the, the deviation variance, and then you square root it to deal with your units. That's all standard deviation is. So there's a check your understanding, and I think that's where I leave you. So we're talking about a basketball team. Find the mean, make a table, calculate variance and standard deviation, interpret. So write that sentence. And I lied. We're not done. I'm so sorry. We're not done. I don't know where I'm at. Choosing measures of center and spread. So I get this question a little bit like, how do I know what's the better center or better spread? So uh, just make sure you kind of read through this. If you're still struggling with this, please see me. I've had a couple kids struggling with this. I've given them a secondary set of notes that I think got them to that point. So again, just, you know, keep on checking in with me on anything you're struggling with. Okay, but remember, center and spread aren't center must be mean, center must be median. No, it's according to your data and it's according to your shape and it's according, it's a lot of different things it's according to. All right, let's move on to the final th thought. How do I organize a statistics problem? So if I give you a real question, what am I going to do? Well, we're going to state, plan, do, and conclude. So let's look at that. So, for the final project, the group of AP students wanted to make the text come to compare the texting habits of males and females. They asked a random sample of students from their school to record the number of text messages sent and received over a two-day period. Here is their data. So, we've got some data. What conclusion should, you, should the students draw? Give appropriate evidence to support your answer. Great statistics question, but how do we break it down? So, here's that four-step process again. State. Do males and females at the school differ in their texting habit? Plan. We're going to start with that parallel box plot. So in order to do box plots, we need its previous steps, the number summaries and all that fun stuff. We're going to calculate one variable statistics, and then we're going to cuss and BS. Shape, center, spread, outliers, and we're always going to be specific. Okay. We are... Oops, on the do step, we'll get to the conclusion step at the end. We'll begin by making parallel box plots. So in order to do that, you know, you need the five number summary, the uh, mean, and the standard deviation. We actually do need that information at this point. But in the previous example I just did, we did everything by hand. The statistics, guys, we have to start using those calculators appropriately. So now we're at a point, we're at a great week, week four, we're going to introduce the TI Inspire. So just a brief, I'd like y'all to look through this or print it out at your own behest or save a PDF to your phone or something. I've given you two links. So calculator warning. Here is a link one. This tells you how to pull five number of summaries with the TI Inspire. Here is the box plot tiny URL. This tells you how to pull, how to create a box and whisker plot using the TI Inspire. So a lot of us are like, oh my God, making all these things takes forever. Yes, but the calculator can do that for us as long as we understand what we're doing. So save these, PDF these, print these, make notes of these, whatever you have to do to get through them. When, when I see y'all in class, we will practice this so it becomes muscle memory. All right, so using my calculator, I got all this information. Then, using my calculator, I got an awesome little box plot. And as you can see, two of these values appeared as one dot, and you, I, I found, we found them by tracing to separate the two values, those outlying values. Okay. 
then uh, we can draw some conclusions just based off of this. And the conclusion is due to the strong skewness and outliers. So you can see crazy skewing in that female and in the males, some crazy outliers. Due to the strong skewness and outliers, we'll use the median and IQR instead of the mean and standard deviation when comparing center and spread. Again, center and spread are based off of your data. Center and spread are based off of your data. Here is my cuss, my center, my unusuals, my shape, and my spread. So some of us are still struggling with this language. I don't suggest that you just read this. I suggest that you write this down. If you literally copy word for word, every time you see appropriate AP language, you're actually going to encode and process that better in your head. By the time we get to May, those sentences will come naturally. And here's my concluding sentence. The data from this survey project gives very strong evidence that, the, that male and female texting happens differ considerably at the school. A typical female sends and receives about 79 more text messages in a two-day period than a typical male. The males as a group are also much more consistent in their texting frequency than the females. So they didn't just, so this conclusion is not just simplistic. It's not a little bit of information. It uses the data to make some very defined and formal inferences. And I think that's all I've got for you guys. Yes, it is. So I'll see y'all in class next week. Remember, technically, you have an extension on that due date to Tuesday.